Kim, what's on your radar? Well, you may have been hearing the term ESG lately. Last Saturday, Elon Musk tweeted, I'm increasingly convinced that corporate ESG is the devil incarnate. People who follow the Great Reset and the World Economic Forum, such as Glenn Beck, often warn against it and are even encouraging legislation to stop it from being used. But it isn't just those who are against ESG talking about it. You may have seen it in headlines on Bloomberg, Market Watch, or Forbes. So what is it? Well, ESG stands for Environment, Social, and Corporate Governance. It's similar to a credit score, except rather than being based around a company's revenue and history of paying back debts, the ESG score is centered around sustainability and ethics. It's currently only given to corporations, but I think it's easy to imagine a future where the score is assigned to individuals as well. Now, the system was set up as a way to let investors, quote unquote, invest responsibly. Many people pride themselves on buying only sustainable products and purchasing from ethical companies. So an ESG score, which is widely used by many investment and fund management firms, makes it easy to determine which companies these are. Now, you can invest your money and feel good, too. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is the system is subjective to whomever decides what ethical is. Though many people believe the ESG scores about climate change and the environment, the truth is the social and governance aspects of the score have just as much weight, sometimes even more, than a company's environmental impact. So the E obviously stands for environment. That's carbon footprint, pollution, and waste. The S stands for social which judges things such as how well a company embraces social justice and how diverse a company is. The G stands for governance. Does the company embrace things like a diversity board and who is in charge? Now, those sound nice enough, except this is just a small list of what goes under each category and the people deciding what is or isn't ethical, like in most Silicon Valley-based companies, are clearly liberal elites. For example, Tesla a company that makes electric vehicles, has a moderate to moderately poor score. How can this be? Think whatever you want about Elon Musk. There's no doubt his car company has been a game changer for the environment. Yet somehow, out of the five U.S.-based automotive companies, companies like Ford, which make gas-guzzling trucks, Tesla's ESG score is the worst. Why is that? Well, because it turns out what liberal elites think about Elon Musk seems to matter. The scoring system takes into account his eclectic personality, his tendency to tweet whatever he wants, his views on COVID and his libertarian politics. Try to make sense of this. Lockheed Martin, a company that produces weapons bringing death and destruction upon the planet, has a higher social responsibility score than Tesla. Why is that? Sorry, I don't mean higher. They have a better social responsibility score. It's actually the lower the score, the better it is. So theirs is actually better than Tesla's. Well, it's because ESG scores are based on what neoliberal elites consider to be moral and good. It's good to supply weapons to our so-called friends. They use them to kill bad guys. Never mind the fact that they also kill children. But it's bad to criticize COVID lockdown policies. Never mind the fact you've arguably done more to advance a greener planet, make space travel cheaper, and bring internet to all than any government or organization on Earth. The score is political. So the company reigning at the very top of the ESG scoring list is, believe it or not, Bill Gates founded Microsoft. Are we surprised? So ESG scores determine how much and how easy it is for a company to secure funds and investments. So it's important to have a good score. The better the score, the greater the cash flow. It's why we're seeing companies go woke by regurgitating slogans like Black Lives Matter while hypocritically using prison labor. It's why companies refuse to do business with controversial people and businesses like when Parler suddenly was dropped from Amazon and Apple. Perhaps it's why GoFundMe dropped the trucker convoy. Despite people thinking these companies make these moves out of some sort of moral signaling, the reality is that many companies don't want to harm their ability to attract investors. They feel forced to make these sort of moves. But who's forcing them? Who's in control of these scores? The people deciding whether or not you are moral and good matters. And I think it's easy to see why this type of moral scoring system can be easily abused. One might think the system is a good idea. It just needs tweaking. But any sort of score that directly ties cash flow to morals and ethics is ripe for abuse. The scores can not only change on a whim based on what the latest woke fad is, but based on what benefits the people in charge. Do we really want neoliberal elites to have the power to compel a company to completely change its ethos in order to raise their scores? 
This has massive implications for society. Companies are modifying their behavior to ingratiate themselves with those in power. They're changing their slogans and advertisements. They're censoring content. They're firing controversial people. Speak up, you might lose your job because you're bad for the company's ESG score. Here's another example. 10 years ago, Disney's ESG score was considered one of the worst. Now, with all the changes they've made to be more inclusive, such as the commitment to make half of all characters from the LGBTQ, LGBTQI plus community, even though they represent only a fraction of the greater population, and made moves to rid themselves, such as right-winger Gina Carino, their score is one of the best. It's right up there with Microsoft. Though the scores haven't been used yet on individuals, We've seen some semblance of it already happening unofficially. It's what cancel culture is based on, but it's become more than just Twitter mobs coming after people. We've seen individuals banned from using social media and services like PayPal and GoFundMe refusing to send payouts to controversial people. They're not doing this because they're morally agreeing with it. They're doing it for their bottom line. Social credit systems are already being implemented in China where good behavior gets rewarded and bad behavior results in societal shunning. ESG scores are the corporate form of this. Even if it never reaches the individual level, the impact it's having on companies ultimately affects us all. It affects which companies survive, what messages companies convey, what content we can consume, and whether or not you have a job. So if what you're doing says, if what you're doing or saying goes against neoliberal elites, you could find your company going out of business or you yourself without a job. I'm um, just curious if you guys, Robbie and Ryan, have you guys heard of ESG scores? This has kind of been making the social media round since Elon kind of came out and said, this is terrible. Obviously, Glenn Beck's been talking about it a lot because it is discussed quite a bit in the World Economic Forum and by Klaus Schwab as the mechanism of the future to kind of push companies and society in the direction that they want. Um, but, you know, obviously, if you're going to base a score off of morality, who gets to decide what the morality is? Yeah. How, how do they factor that in? Like, let's say he tweets something that somebody doesn't like. How like what's the mechanism for that to be factored into? Well, a score? like like credit scores, it's not exactly transparent. So they, they we really don't know what does affect a company's score as much. There are some things that are obvious and they get consultants and consultants will help them figure that out. So for example, if you add recycling bins, you know, like when Disney decided to add recycling bins to their parks, that of course raised their score. But uh, so, so there are some obvious things, but then there are things that are not as obvious when it comes to environment, it's a bit more obvious. When it comes to social, it's not as obvious. And when it comes to governance, it's not as obvious as well because they could just not like your CEO and decide, well, then you get a lower score. It's more of just societal perception, and it is based on what the neoliberals believe to be good and bad. Yeah, I'm... Uh, well, Tesla's got, gotten sued for ra race relations in there. I know very right, so little helped, about that, this, right. so I'm just Googling around. Uh, the Motley Fool says... Yeah, it, this looks it looks like it's incredibly political to me. Like it would be border bordering on arbitrary. Um, not so much for the the criteria you just mentioned, Kim. Like you know, if you if you for environmental uh, adding environmentally friendly options, if that's relevant to your industry, that seems maybe a little less political. But for 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 gov for their governance score, they consider the the composition of the board in terms of diversity and independence. Um, executive compensation, uh, business ethics, uh, a lot of things that sound exactly like you described, Kim. Like it could just be like what right. makes liberal elites happy. Is this woke yeah, enough? Can, yeah, because you can interpret ethics however you right. want, right? I mean, so it depends right. on who's in charge of the scoring system that gets to decide what is ethical, what isn't ethical, right. what is good social governance, what isn't good social governance. So. Uh, now, this system has been implemented for a while. It's been in use uh, at least, I mean, it was developed decades ago. It's been more prominently in use for at least 10 years, definitely in the early, you know, 2010, 2011, 2012 is when it really started to take hold. And it's become much more prominent now. Pretty much every investment fund firm, money mm -hmm. management firm uses these ESG scores. So well, well, that, that, and that's what I'd want to know. If Well, if they use them, they probably think they're valuable, right? It, 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 do in, investors... Uh, do investors, you know, make more of a return on their investment if they invest in companies? Do do companies that have 
higher or lower, or whatever, better ESG scores make more money for the investors than other companies. I, 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 they, maybe they would, they'd probably start ignoring them or maybe, I don't know, maybe they make more money pretending to care about them because it makes woke customers or something happy. I don't know. It's more like putting lipstick on a pig. It's not mm -hmm. exactly, uh, you know, it's, it's like, oh, this just makes you feel good as an investor. You want to invest in companies that are quote unquote socially conscious or responsible um, or environmentally friendly. And and they and so it's it's not really you know a lot of these companies aren't actually I mean Lockheed Martin why do they have a better score than Tesla somebody explain right. that you know it, but it's more about they do little things to kind of boost their score slightly like Disney and it just makes investors feel better but it's not necessary so yes there's more money that flows in because if you are managing money uh, you know and, and your investors but, want to but invest that's what in I, but that's what I'm it, asking that's what I'm wondering do investors see it as valuable do they say oh this company has a better ESG rating so we, we should be more we we should want to invest in this one because this is going to make us more money do well, they no, see do, it that way is what I wonder I don't, I don't think it's about making more money because that company is going to be more profitable it's more like the mm -hmm. investors the people that are giving them the money want to feel good about their investments. Right, and they are often political entities themselves. Right. So let's say it's a city. Mm -hmm. So politicians are the ones who are investing the pension fund for the city. Or if it's a teacher's right. union or a firefighter's union, you might have, you would have people who are saying, like, we should make sure that our investments are, I see. are ethical. And then so then yes. the companies and then the investment managers then come up with ways to say, okay, well, these are... The, no. right. the same way that you had a lot of climate activists in college, co in colleges, telling their endowments, "We don't want you investing in oil companies." Right. And so then right. these, as a or we want you to be, what is it, LEED certified or whatever. That uh, I remember that was a big deal. Right. And so then you have money managers who create products for yeah. that. It wouldn't be right. surprising that the money managers don't actually care yeah. and are creating like pretty much <laughs> arbitrary stuff. Oh, oh, you want good investments? Oh, yeah, these yeah. are good. Mm -hmm. But I also think it like there's some like I. I think there's some fairness to saying, like, if you've had a ton of, like, settlements around harassment and racism in your workplace, that there might be some consumers who want to take that into account or some investors that want to take that into account when they're deciding whether right. not to invest. So I think because from a kind of socialist perspective, it's like, look, you've already told socialists that you, they can't democratically control how investment is done in society. We, I have told like, them that. Right. You told, told them that. Them that and you tell them, that, yeah. look, but you're, you're free to make your own choices <laughs> mm -hmm. about how investments are made. And then if they organize and start directing it, so well, not, not like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, that, but I think Kim's right that she's flagged like a lot of flaws in how this is done but i think the principle if you're not going to allow democratic control of capital investment then people still do have a right to organize around the idea of how you invest money right. in society sure but well, they definitely but have a right yeah we're just well i don't right. i don't not putting yeah. and, and, we, and, we, and we have a right to say the, the way you're right. doing it is is kind of silly yeah. right well i mean this is putting a score it's almost like putting a scarlet letter on somebody who is bad right because if your score is if you have a bad score then it's like you're getting a scarlet letter so i mean we have to yes i understand the principle of it that okay i would like to know which companies are socially responsible and which ones i want to you know what what which ice cream do i want to buy do i want to buy ben and jerry's or do i want to buy yeah. you know some other company that maybe isn't uh doesn't share the same values as i do right we have that ability to make those choices as our as a consumer as an individual of course mm -hmm. but the the problem is, is that these ESG scores are not about the people organizing. This is about neoliberal elites organizing, and they decide these scores. And then they're well, telling the us, people, this, is, yeah. this is who is good and who is bad. Often it's people organizing, but then the people's organizing work is being co-opted and channeled by those neo, Often, neoliberal yeah. alerts, which is the story of our lives. Story right. of our lives. All right, thank you, Kim. Tomorrow on Rising, journalist Manny Morota will be here to break down the latest on the Russia-Ukraine war. And Layla Dalton, the Starbucks union leader who was recently fired by the company, will be with us to discuss her experience and her efforts to unionize. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. And be sure to check out our podcast. We've got podcasts wherever podcasts are available. So be sure to share and subscribe that as well. And also find us on TikTok. Um, I think we're everywhere now, right? We're, we're like TikTok, podcasts. Everywhere. Can't, can't um, avoid us. You cannot avoid us. You cannot escape. You could suspend us. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't try. Yeah. For now, we're everywhere. Yeah, we totally get right. ourselves. 
in trouble again. We'll try not to do that, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.